Kusangpu to all the viewers. Today we will be talking about autism and this year the theme is inclusion and neurodiversity. Well, to talk more about this, towards my right I have Ms. Chin Ho, a speech therapist from Singapore and currently volunteering at Ability Bhutan Society. And then to my left I have Geden Shofel, the project coordinator at Roxo Vocational Training Institute. And then next to that is Ms. Bedagiri, the executive director of Ability Bhutan Society. Welcome to the show. Now to begin with, uh, what is autism? Mm -hmm. um, so autism is a neurological disorder that impacts an individual across his or her entire lifespan. Um, so they would have, in order to be diagnosed with autism, an individual has to have difficulties in um, all three areas. So namely, um, communication difficulties, social interaction, and behaviours like um, restricted interests and repetitive behaviours. And what are some of the characteristics of autism? Yep. So in terms of um, the first area would be communication. Um, so what this means is that they would have difficulties um, understanding what we say um, and also in areas of expressing what they want. Um, so unfortunately there are going to be some people with autism that would never be able to speak verbally throughout their entire life. Um, and in order to communicate their um, needs, they might need other forms of communication. So this could come in the form of gestures, signing, um, picture exchange, or using speech generating devices. Um, <clears throat> the other area would be in terms of social interaction. Um, so a lot of children um, or people with autism, um, they have difficulty socialising with people. Um, they usually like to be by themselves rather than with people. Um, they enjoy and are more fixated with objects rather than seeking interaction with people. Um, and for those children that could um, establish relationships, they would have problems maintaining it. Um, and often we would say that these children have um, are in a world of their own. Yeah. Um, so the third area would be in terms of their limited interests um, or repetitive behaviours. Uh, so we will see them doing things like hand flapping, um, spinning or rocking. Um, children would be, could be really obsessed with certain things. So some of them really like trains or dinosaurs, um, things like that. Um, and another area would be they have difficulty making up um, making sense of the things around them. So they could be really sensitive to loud noises or crowded places. Uh, so what this means is that when they hear a loud noise, all of a sudden they might um, scream, you know, suddenly or unexpectedly. Um, and this could be, this could create a problem for the members of the public who do not understand um, what autism is. Okay, yeah. uh, how common is autism? Mm -hmm. People from all nationals, from all regions, all religion, religions and social background can have autism. Although it appears mostly on men than uh, women, it is a lifelong uh, condition and children with autism grow up and become adult with autism. So uh, today it is estimated in 1 in 68 worldwide. And what causes autism? Uh, so far, it is unknown, but research is still going on. Uh, well, uh, how early can autism be recognized? And in Bhutan, is it all, always like early diagnosis? Uh, usually, children with autism can be diagnosed as the early part of the life. Uh, usually, uh, when they started uh, doing babbling, uh, focusing the eyes together with other peers or the parents, so we can usually the parents can note it as early as possible, but when we talk about the diagnostic mm -hmm. in the hospital, usually they bring the children at the later of, after the eighteen months of age. Well, what can parents do with children living with autism? Yeah. What can parents do with uh, children living with autism? Mostly, uh, what we believe in and what the parents' concern are mostly they have difficulties. Uh, bringing the children in an inclusive society and bringing to the peers. So uh, the parents' involvement is very much crucial in the area of children with autism. Uh, being too much, uh, giving them the structure area of uh, programs in any of the activities of daily livings. 
uh, and maintaining the same uh, course of uh, program throughout and making the transition and bringing, uh, preparing for the next transition as well. Okay, now as you worked with uh, mm -hmm. those children who are living with autism yeah. for, with ability to dance society, mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges that you face so far and uh, what do you think should be done? Um, I think the, as I speak to the parents um, when I'm working with them over here, um, what I hear is that they are quite frustrated with the limited services that they have in Bhutan. So they could be worried but they don't really have a professional to bring to, um, to ask for advice. Um, and another um, thing that I've heard that they're really, really worried about is about the schooling for their children. Um, so, you know, teachers and schools might not yet understand what children with autism present with. And so it's quite hard to include them in schooling. When you talk about services, what are the services that Ability Bhutan Society has to provide to these children? Uh, Ability Bhutan Society serves for children with all needs all types of abilities, not only with children with autism, but uh, when we talk about children with autism, uh, we mostly do with the early intervention. And for children with autism, we need more of a intensive care, intensive therapy like social interaction, uh, social communication, and behavior management, whereby mm, we usually train the uh, teach, uh, social worker, the child, as well as the family should be included together. And what about drugs? So, so uh, autism, like uh, autism, it depends upon the degree of uh, severity. So there is like um, uh, in drugs, so we have around um, the not so severe uh, cases. So uh, we provide uh, the facility uh, uh, of the vocational skills and then even the social life skills, and even we focus on the academic uh, skills development. So that uh, they could uh, they could be ready to uh, be uh, to get into the market and then uh, be independent in their life. Uh, when you talk about services, you as a volunteer working here, I'm sure you must have found a vast difference between Singapore and Bhutan. But then, what do you think are some of the uh, services that we need to put in place to better cater to these people? Mm -hmm. um, so children with autism, you know, like I mentioned, the main areas of difficulties would be communication, social interaction and behaviours. Um, so some of the professionals that work to address these areas um, would include speech therapists like myself, um, psychologists, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, um, and behavioral therapists. Um, and from my understanding, there are not many of these professionals here in Bhutan. Um, so these might, this might be in some, you know, an area that um, hopefully we would see more of in Bhutan. And I believe, uh, as Ms. Chen who talked, we need a lot of therapies. So can we have those therapies? Uh, as seeing the children needs, the need for the country and doing, making the meaningful services to the uh, people living with uh, autism and other disabilities, we really need lots of professionals in the field of uh, disability. And how are you all trying to get these professionals? Did you all talk with the government or are you all trying to get it from maybe again volunteers like Ms. Chen who? Mm -hmm. Yes. We are really happy to have Jean here. Uh, she came as a tourist first and she has an interest and the passion of working for children with autism and other disabilities. That's how we managed to bring her as a uh, trainer now, which she has been training the parents uh, depending on the theme of this year with the neurodiversity and which was, which was four days training and it was really successful and the parents has gained lots of information. Likewise, we also urge the government of Bhutan and the Ministry of Health to really look into this matter and uh, develop our own national professionals so that we can have the local professionals helping these children and the country. Uh, so far with the limited services we have here, uh, how effective are your centres in helping those children? It is a challenge. We have been looking to the specialised volunteers and professionals outside and we have been a little bit of success but still there is a challenge because they, they won't be here for the long term and having our own national would be very meaningful. So we have uh, the specialist uh, 
from India, who uh, she's uh, uh, she's the specialist uh, who who teach about the autism. Who then she teaches um, gives training to our teacher uh, the how to in, uh, get the early intervention regarding the autism, and uh, even to make the syllabus according uh, to uh, according to the need of the autism. Uh, so far, how many cases of autism has Troxo and Ability Bhutan seen over the years? What about EBS? We have, uh, with the support of Bhutan Foundation, we have sent two professionals from Ability Bhutan Society to specialize on autism in New York. So once uh, they are back, we hope to have a specialized and who can train the other professionals as well. Now going back to the theme inclusion and neurodiversity, are the children living with autism throughout the country included in all the services and programs that you all have? How do you all try to get in touch with all those children? Again, this is a big challenge and because we don't have the qualified professionals who can cater the needs of the individual child and with the limited funding and the limited resources, we could not reach to each and every part of the region. But uh, however, uh, our services should be reaching to everybody, but still the stigma and discrimination because uh, the children with autism looks like us, like they are not having the different features like children with Down syndrome, children with cerebral palsy. So uh, sometimes they are being treated in a different manner uh, by the family as well as the general public. So we really need to be uh, creating awareness on including them, looking into them as a real human being as we are. If you could talk about some of the things that the society should uh, understand about these people. Yeah, um, so like I mentioned, in terms of um, the difficulties that they face, um, so communication is one big area. So they might not understand what we're telling them um, and they have difficulties expressing themselves. So in that sense, um, even when we're telling them something to do, um, they might not fully comprehend what we actually expect of them. Um, so that is an area of challenge. Um, so I think when I speak to parents, they find it quite hard to bring them out in, in the public areas um, because, you, like I mentioned, they have difficulties making sense of things around them. So even crowded places, um, a confined place could scare them. Um, a parent shared about how the child uh, was in a cafe once and saw a very attractive um, cap on a lady. So he just took it off. Um, and the lady got really, really upset and I think um, gave him a scolding. So, and that really upset the parent and it's of no fault of the child. Um, but if people in the general public do not understand their difficulties um, and like what Madam said about it being, you know, um, they look like any other typical person. So it's really an invisible disability. Um, so that sometimes makes it hard for us to create awareness. It means in Bhutan, social stigma still does exist. Yes, okay. so, uh, that is what the parents' concern are and we really wanted to advocate and educate the public that we are all together. Okay, uh, now going back to the intervention and all, like, when is the best time to provide intervention? As early as possible, as, the, as early as the parent notices. Uh, we want the parents to take to the uh, healthcare system and bringing to the early intervention program, which has the uh, different services uh, system in place whereby the individual needs can be catered accordingly. Again, going back to Ms. Chen, how does autism affect the behavior? Um, so they would have, um, you know, repetitive behaviors. So sometimes in terms of like I mentioned earlier, like flapping their hands, um, you know, rocking and spinning, that um, actually calms them down. Um, so this could look atypical to people and, you know, as the child gets older, um, they might not get out of this behaviour. So it would sometimes appear different to others and if they don't understand that, um, they, could take, they could just think that the child is misbehaving and not listening to their parents, but it's in fact something that they cannot control. Yeah. 
I want to talk about, uh, again, <laughs> coming back to social stigma, are our parents ready to accept their, that their children is living with autism? And are they forward, like, are they coming forward to get, avail those services at your centers? La? Many of them with the uh, education program, with the awareness program, and many of them now with the uh, internet world, they have been very much aware, but still in the rural area, it is so much difficulty for them to uh, not only bring to the healthcare system, but even to manage in their own society itself, because people look them in a different way. Yeah. And for drugs, so how do you all like create awareness? Do you all uh, have any plans and programs where you all go uh, to the uh, room, uh, remote pockets of the country and then create awareness and all those things? Uh, so for that, like uh, we have uh, we have opened a, a branch in Tashkent so that uh, they can have uh, avail the services in the eastern part of the country, enrolled. And uh, the services uh, the provided in Thimpu is also similar in that uh, eastern part, so that uh, they, the eastern part, they have the uh, boarding facility out there, and then they can stay there, and then they can learn uh, uh, besides going there at home. And, <clears throat> and yes, we have uh, some of the programs that uh, we want to extend our services to other Zonghaks also, uh, by, so that they can um, have the services of drug Well, now, anything that you want to add on autism? Um, so I hope that you know parents seek help as soon as possible. Going to back to you know the inter um, the importance of early intervention, um, because we know that when children are younger, uh, we can mold their brains um, faster, and there is more potential for change. Um, and yeah, and the importance of parent involvement because they are the ones that are staying with the kids and they are going to be the ones that are going to bring the biggest change in the child's life. In Bhutan, uh, is it the male or the females who are mostly affected with autism? Uh, we haven't had the statistics so far, the real data, but as a worldwide, male are affected more. Okay, now lastly, I think we did cover a lot of things. So since tomorrow is World Autism Day, what are Ability Bhutan Society and Jokso doing to observe the day? So tomorrow, like, uh, we have a collaboration program with the uh, Ability Bhutan Society and uh, uh, Disabled Persons Association of Bhutan and uh, Tarayana. And even uh, there is one uh, Japan uh, uh, NGO, a Bushen, a, uh, which is collaborate with the uh, Tarayana. We are collaborating, uh, collaborating together to have a program at Draksul, which is uh, tomorrow uh, Autism Day is led by Draksul to have a program. There we have a day program where uh, the children will uh, have a gathering out there and then have a program called uh, small program, day program, uh, where they will uh, conduct small uh, dances by the autism and other uh, combination of uh, disabled and also the family uh, the parents will come uh, come there and then even the caregivers of all the staffs uh, uh, here in bhutan as per the royal command by the gilson uh, since 2013 we have been observing autism day world autism day by lighting up blue and uh, it is the major interest of her majesty the gilson and we have been very thankful to her, as well as uh, she has the initiation on Light It Up Blue and uh, creating awareness on people living with autism, children living with autism. And uh, since 2013, we have been lighting up many of the landmarks and we have been very successful on creating the awareness uh, throughout the nationwide. And uh, when we talk about the message tomorrow, we really wanted to see the person first, like not uh, saying as an autistic child or autistic person, but rather than focusing on the person first, like person living with autism, uh, so that they will also be honored and be uh, respected. Lastly, your message to the general mass, all three of you. Um, for me, um, you know, stressing again the importance of early intervention and parent involvement um, because, like I said, that has, um, in the course of my working with families, has brought the biggest change in these children. And what about Sir uh, the, the, uh, the general uh, concept or perception of the people is that uh, the people with disability um, are, cannot do anything in their life. 
that uh, I think it is uh, wrong because when I uh, worked in this uh, field, I think that if given the opportunity, they have the capability and ability to become independent and uh, learn and uh, stay self-reliant in their life. And what about them? Mm -hmm. uh, for me, let's be mindful as we are the GNS country and every citizen has the right and these children and the people should be included in an inclusive manner. Well, thank you so much. And with this, we come to the end of our show. And I would also like to end with a quote which says, Autism is not a disability, but it is a different ability. Well, that's all we have for tonight. And this is Shirab Sangbo saying goodbye.